Good morning. Normally when I give these presentations, I'm able to show beautiful pictures of shipwrecks throughout the Bahamas, but unfortunately this time I've been asked to present just on statistics, and I'm gonna give a very glaring example of this whole mythology of the good treasure hunter. Before I get into this presentation though, I wanted to just show where the Bahamas was and why we have such a vast amount of underwater cultural heritage. The Bahamas is located just south of Florida or just north of the Greater Antilles in the Caribbean, but we are the location of the shipping routes between the old and the new world. And a lot of our underwater cultural heritage stems from a lot of the European powers that colonized the Caribbean. From 1972 to 1979, to 1999, the government of the Bahamas actually issued 71 perm permits for the search and recovery of shipwrecks. However, in 1999, a moratorium was, placed in place, was put in place to stop this, and this moratorium is still in existence today. I'm gonna, although I'm gonna show all of the permits issued, I'm only gonna highlight a couple of them, because if I talked about every permit, we would be here all day. The first permit that we actually have data for was issued in 1972, and this is a treasure hunter most countries in the Caribbean are very f familiar with, Bob Marks. He recovered a plethora of treasures and other items from the Bahamas, very few of which he actually turned over to the Bahamas. Unfortunately, in 1974, his permit was can well, I should say fortunately, it was canceled with a whole range of stories between both parties of corruption, lies, deceit, and so forth. However, unfortunately today, we have no data on exactly what all was recovered. All we know is that he worked on a very famous Spanish shipwreck, the Nuestra de la Señora Maravillas. Also, at the same time, we have several other permits that were issued, and either no file can be found, or we have no activity on the files, which in some cases I find very weird when you have permits issued multiple years upon years, and the file has no, no information. Once again, in 1982, permits were issued for the Maravillas area. But however, once again, you had a lot of disputes of, and allegations of corruption, disputes, and even lawsuits between various treasure com hunting companies alleging infringement of rights. One of the most classic cases of treasure hunting in the Bahamas, so, was with a permit that was issued in 1984 and expired in 1996. This was once again for the Maravillas area, and this whole case was the res is what resulted in our moratorium being put in place. A permit was issued to Hubert Herbert Humphreys and his Marex company, and over the 12 years of salvage, he presented the government of the Bahamas with a check for $320,000. However, a huge Christie's auction in 1994 apparently resulted in millions of dollars in sales, which outraged the government of the Bahamas because they felt that they had been ripped off. So at that point, they issued a moratorium and no more new permits were issued. However, they allowed existing permits to continue. Permits have, were continued to be issued, and we find in many cases Shipwrecks were located, and sometimes in the files it would look, tell you how many shipwrecks were located, but no locations, no data on exactly what kind of shipwrecks or what was found or what was recovered. Many times in the government files it says artifacts are divided, but in my investigations, can't find what artifacts were divided, where they were divided, or where they located. And to this date, we still don't know where these artifacts are. We have one case in the Bahamas where, we have two cases in the Bahamas during this time where permits were actually issued to archeological firms or archeological groups. One is the Texas A&M Institution in the United States and they actually excavated one of the oldest shipwrecks in the New World and we have extensive data on that shipwreck. Another license was issued to a company out of Florida, which carries a bad name, but they actually do good work. It's the Mel Fisher Maritime Heritage Institute. While they do carry the name of Mel Fisher, one of the more infamous treasure hunters in Florida, the work done by this institution is top-notch, and 
The reports from the shipwreck details every artifact found. We can account for everything that has been discovered, and everything has been conserved in labs. However, in the investigations, I could find also cases of artifacts but no reports, um, items recovered but no permits issued. And so it became very difficult to trace how many permits were issued over the time. So to just give an overview, from 1972 to 1999, the government of the Bahamas issued 71 permits. 46 of these permits have no recoveries whatsoever or no documented recoveries. 26 of these permits, either there were no recoveries or no recorded field work or nothing on file. And some of these permits were issued year after year after year. So I question, were there really no field work or was there just no accountability? We have 19 permits that had recoveries, but most did not divide the artifacts, or there was no account of artifacts given. Two of those were archaeological projects. And then three projects actually had artifacts with divisions. And I can tell you, for the most part, the government of the Bahamas received from more or less crap. Um, when I got a chance to investigate the artifacts, I found bags that was written on it, junk, junk, junk coins for the government. And it amazes me that the government would actually accept something with the word junk written on it, but there was no proper oversight. And then we had the one, cash pay, one project with a cash payment. All of this was governed under what was called the Abandoned Rex Act, and this has since been repealed. Since then, we've had an Antiquities Act passed that governs archaeology in the country, but made no real specific mention of underwater cultural heritage. In 2011, the government amended this act, and it defined underwater cultural heritage, but they made the mistake of trying to merge underwater cultural heritage with commercial salvage. And when I first saw the first draft of the legislation, my comment was, these two do not work together. They presented a legislation that talked about division of artifacts, and then they gave me regulations that were an exact copy of the UNESCO annex. And so my first comment to the government was, you have to get rid of one, either the 25%, 75% split, or you have to change your regulations. They made a decision to change the regulations and asked me to write new ones. And luckily for me, I was able to write ones that were so restricted, no permits have actually been issued since. Currently, though, however, we have 19 full applications before the government and another five cases of individuals actually making presentations to the government for our applications. Also at this time, we've had a U.S. commercial salver put a claim in for a Bahamian wreck in an American federal court. And the worst part about it was the American federal court approved his claim. The challenge that we have in the Bahamas is that the Bahamas, although a small country, is incredibly large. We have the largest exclusive economic zone in the Caribbean. And for a small country, this is bigger than all of the islands in the Greater Antilles. And if we look at the exclusive economic zones of the entire Lesser Antilles, these are the small islands in the Southern Caribbean combined, it's still not as big as the Bahamas. So we have an incredible amount of space that we have to patrol. This causes problems today. We have a lot of fishermen who know where all of the wrecks are, and they bring them up, and they take it to the cash for gold locations. And our cash for gold, there's no regulations to govern these. So they're buy, buying constantly Spanish silver and gold, and I'm always hearing stories about it afterwards. Also, we have incredible problems of looters. Since we're so close to the United States, you have a lot of looters from the state of Florida who just come over for a day, and they know where all of the wrecks are. And the picture I show here is a, it's a picture of a melted gold, I don't know how to, what else to describe it as, but that was looted off of a known wreck off of Grand Bahama. And the looters in, off of the state of Florida are so bold that they post this information online almost daily. Even on our blogs, you have this whole dissent on what should the country do. Here is an example of somebody who's arrested for looting a known wreck in the Bahamas. And the social commentary is, well, the government doesn't own that. That's in the water. It should be owned by everybody. But since 1999, the agency I work for, we've been recommending policies for responsible and modern management of historic shipwrecks in Bahamian waters based on the UNESCO Convention 
conservation, public access, respect for national heritage, and public benefit through heritage tourism. We've had the opportunity of doing a few small projects in our agency to show the government how these projects should work, but we're still fighting the whole myth of the treasure hunter. Thank you.